Welcome, everyone. Uh, this is another installment of our weekly uh, web series where the Oracle Database Development Team talks to you folks, and hopefully you talk back a little bit about our technology. And this week, I'm going to be talking about, assuming I can get the slide deck to behave, yep, our database virtual box appliance. You heard the little voice pop up a few seconds ago saying this is being recorded. It will be posted to our YouTube channel later uh, today, as are all of the previous week's sessions. I'm going to mute the lines now. There's not a lot of people on the call, so if you want to ask a question, feel free. Just unmute your line with star six or uh, send it over the chat. Okay, so everyone should be muted but me, hopefully. I am on the database development team, specifically the uh, Oracle SQL Developer and SQL Developer Data Modeler group. I'm the product manager, and you can reach out to me if you'd like on Twitter. I'm at that Jeff Smith, or if you're more old school, you can do the email. Just don't forget the um, middle initial in my address. There's a lot of Jeff Smiths here at Oracle. This is one of my favorite uh, resources that we have available for folks to download, especially since it's free. This allows one to stand up Oracle Database on a virtual image and have everything ready to go for you to start you know, learning and playing around with our new technology. The current version of this appliance has database 12C, specifically 12102. Uh, I say 12102 specifically um, because there's a few new technologies in 12102 that I'll call out here in a second. But it's running on uh, Oracle Linux. So if I'm running this appliance on my Mac, I'd have Mac, OS X, whatever running. And then in that, a VirtualBox program which would then start up this appliance, which would look like it's Linux, basically is Linux, and inside of that, there would be an Oracle database. And in that Oracle database, I would have uh, all of our sample data, and from the development tools team, um, most of our products already installed and configured and ready to go, including Application Express, Oracle REST data services, SQL Developer, SQL Developer Data Modeler, and then what we also call our hands-on labs, which are HTML-guided um, exercises um, that you can step through step-by-step step or jump around and try new things out. Like, for example, if you want to build an Apex application from scratch and learn how to use SQL Developer to debug a stored procedure that's running in that application, you can, you know, follow along, look at the pictures, copy and paste the code, um, and run it and see it for yourself. We use these images internally um, for tons of things. And you'll see us running these images a lot of times when we're out doing presentations. And if you're at events like Open World, you'll see this exact image or um, a very similar version of it running in our demo pod, so when you come down and talk to us in the exhibition hall and say, hey, show me what's new with XML in the database, it's probably the XML database product manager is running this image to host the database there on their machine. And anytime you see us um, hosting hands-on labs at conferences, um, including at Open World, this image is running on those boxes. I use it um, for all of my blogging, for trying out new things, um, for doing my work. And it's okay for me to do that because I work for Oracle, but I will say for everyone else, the image is being provided on OTN and your license covers you for um, doing things like, um, you know, I'm new to Oracle, I want to learn more about it, or um, I've been around for a long time, I want to check out this 12.102 in memory feature. But what it's not for 
is actual um, production corporate type work. So don't use this to host any of your um, data warehouses or OLTP applications, any of your business applications, um, not for doing any actual work. And if I click on this linked test here, it'll actually, or this linked text, it'll actually pull up the license agreement that you click through when you go to download this. Okay, so that's what it looks like. That's what the software looks like. I just want to stress this. Testing purposes or teaching purposes only. Don't use it to start up your own .com. One of the great things about VirtualBox, and that's one of our techs, um, it's free. It's available and has uh, installers or packages available for just about any operating system platform you can think of. So if you're running Debian 6.0 or Windows 8 or OSX Yosemite or Solaris or whatever, there's going to be probably a, a, a virtual box um, installer ready for you. And if there's not, if you go to the bottom of the page on the VirtualBox download site, there, you can even download the source code and build your own copy of it. To run our appliance, you do have to have VirtualBox installed. Um, in terms of versions, you know, just grab the latest production version of it. I have not tried this with um, VirtualBox 5, which is in beta right now. If anyone else wants to do that, let me know how it works. Feel free to feel free to do that. Downloading VirtualBox, um, it's not that big of a deal. Um, downloading the appliance in terms of modern internet speeds isn't that big of a deal either. It's about six gigabytes. Don't try to download it in a hotel conference um, or hotel um, guest room. You want to download it at home where you have a you know a real um, internet connection or download it at work. Once you download it, um, you'll import it in VirtualBox. So if I come into when you open VirtualBox, everything on this left hand panel for you will be empty because you won't have anything yet. A lot of people will go to click on new. Clicking on new lets you create a new image. So if I have the media uh, for Windows 10, I could say new and it'll say, okay, mount or you know, give me the install media for Windows 10 and then we'll build an image for Windows 10. We already have an appliance and I just want to import it. So I'll click import appliance and you'll just open up a file dialog to that file that we just downloaded. And after you do that, there's a, um, there's a little dialog that says, hey, um, is this an appliance that you're copying from somewhere else? And you'll just say yes there. It's, a, um, it's not huge, but what it basically does when you import that appliance is it writes down um, two different um, media files that basically serve as the hard disk for the image. I think the first file is like 10 gigabytes and the second one's like 15 gigabytes. Um, so we're writing down like somewhere between 20 and 30 gigs of data on a physical, you know, device. So when you, um, before you actually click the import button, you see the settings here, and there are two that you want to take note of. Um, the first one's really easy to change, um, and you can change it really at any time except for when it's running, and that's the amount of um, memory you want to give to the appliance. Now, I think we theoretically tell people that you need a gig, um, but we're running a lot of different stuff on this image, and uh, what I'm running mine with is at 2 gigs, and it runs just fine from what I can tell. I'm on a 64-bit OS. I'm using both uh, OS X and Windows 7, 
um, with eight gigs of RAM at least, and, and for both of them, this image runs just fine with two. If you're on a beefy machine and you're not using memory and you feel guilty for spending all that money for that 16 or 32 gigabyte uh, piece of hardware, you know, you can give this image more memory if you want. Or leave it at two and you could run three or four of these images um, concurrently. But if you're on a Windows XP desktop and you've only got three gigs of RAM total, I'm, I'm not sure this is going to run that well for you. But you can try stripping down um, the memory all the way down to maybe 750 gigs and see if the database will start up. Um, you can change the default locations um, for these two files that we're going to put down. This is where I've put them for me. You can put them anywhere. If you've got a solid state disk and you've got space there, put them there. Don't put them on your USB thumb drive because uh, it's not going to be very fun to write out and it's going to run like a dog. Once it's done doing that, you'll come back to this screen uh, and you could open the settings for the image, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, but all I have to do is click the Start button. Now mine's already, um, this one right here is already running. And when VirtualBox is running, it actually shows you what's in the desktop uh, running right now. And right now it's running the screensaver. This one's not running. This one right here is actually an old version of this image that we put out there that has 11G R2 on it. Um, this one has a little 64 icon because it's 64 bit, so you will need a, uh, I think you need a 64 bit OS to run this image. But that's pretty much the default now. So hopefully you've got a machine that's not 10 years old. Um, my button here says show on your screen, it'll say start, or you can right click and say start. And hopefully, if all things are awesome, you'll get a screen that looks like this. Uh, and hopefully the little progress bars move. Uh, but it's possible what you'll see instead is an error message after a few seconds. And it might not be this exact text, um, but it will be really close to it, although I think this is pretty much how it always surfaces itself. Um, when we do these hands-on labs where people kind of bring their own devices um, to a conference and we'll sit people down and, and walk through some of these lab exercises with them, we spend the first half hour probably helping people who didn't download and install the image like we asked them to, which is fine, but then we're passing around thumb drives and they're copying these huge files around or some of them are even trying to download it off their 4G cell phone Wi-Fi network. But invariably, at least 20 to 30% of those people won't be able to start the image because they get this error message. And what's happened is um, the person um, in IT or corporate, whoever, who imaged their laptop didn't enable hardware virtualization in the machine BIOS. And we have to have that. So if you have access to changing the BIOS settings on your machine, go in there and turn on the um, hardware virtualization. If you don't have access to that, you're kind of in a don't stop, don't pass go uh, situation. And you'll have to ask someone to go turn that on for you. I have not posted this slide deck yet, um, but I have a blog post that talks about all of this, and um, I will post these slides. But this link basically gives you a generic uh, set of directions on how to you know, go set up your system BIOS to enable them. Um, virtualization. I can't imagine a scenario where you would buy a, a beefy 64-bit machine and then not enable that, but like I said, about 20 to 30 percent of the people that show up to our events are in that scenario. Okay, so um, when the machine comes up, you're going to have to log on. And uh, even if you never log on to the machine itself and just connect to the database running on the machine, you'll need to log on. And uh, all of those things require authentication. So to make this as easy as possible, 
not to make it secure as possible. We don't want to make it so secure that people new to Oracle can't log on to the darn thing. Um, all of the passwords are Oracle. And if lower, if um, case sensitive, they're lowercase Oracle. So no zeros, no ones, just O-R-A-C-L-E. That's the root password. That's the sys password. That's the HR password. That's the Oracle OS user password. Um, if there's a username password combination on the machine, either database or OS, where the password is not Oracle, I guess that theoretically would be a bug. But the sys user and the root user passwords are both Oracle. So you have the ability to change the passwords for anything you want on that machine knowing this. So at this point, let me give you a little tour of the image. And what I'm going to try to do is do that from my Mac. I tested this earlier and it seemed to work okay. Let's see if it works now in production. Yeah, and down here is VirtualBox. So in my VirtualBox, I have three images. One is a Windows environment for XP that I created for my wife so she could run her stained glass um, software that's never been upgraded to a modern OS. Um, when I mentioned earlier, the license doesn't all give you, you know, basically commercial or production type privs. That's for the database that's running in the image itself. VirtualBox is open source. You can put any sort of appliance or image on here that you want. Um, I need a Windows license to create and run that image. But um, what I want to talk about today is not my white stained glass software, but the uh, the database appliance, which is this one right here. So I think I've also given it just two gigs of RAM, and it seems to be just fine. And here we can see what it's running. And this is the um, virtual box image itself. So if I come down here and look at my um, sys tray, you've got the virtual box program, and then right next to it, generally you'll have the, the VM pop up and obviously you want to come in here. So your first test might be, uh, even if you've been using Linux for a while, uh, you've got to figure out how to um, crack the screensaver here. So you just swipe up or click and drag up here and that gets you inside the image. I think that's new for uh, Oracle Link 7. Minimize him. Move him around. Quit, quit. Stop screen. Yep. So your screen is going to look pretty much like this because I don't think I've changed it much. This big round circle that says click here to start, that's a shortcut to the Firefox browser on here where all the labs are, which is this screen, although I don't know why it's doing that. This is the beauty of live demo. If I click the home button, you can see I'm running CNN um, in that browser inside the image. So. The default network settings should give you network access, so you can go download stuff if you want. You don't technically need network access to, to use the image, though. So if you um, are really keen on teaching yourself uh, our applications or just Oracle basic concepts, these are the tracks that you have available. And these would be the same tracks that you would run at our on-site events. And we're building new ones now for uh, open world this fall, 
Um, there'll be a lot of cool stuff on there. But these are the same labs that were there in Open World 2014. So there's one on here for SQL Developer, and I can learn how to um, implement redaction schemes and how to manage my um, 12C multi-tenant databases and how to do a Sybase database migration or um, how to use our card to do a deployment. I think there's one in here for uh, tuning SQL. Um, the optimizer one's a really good one. Um, that was built um, by Maria Colgan when she was product manager for um, the database optimizer. And this one down here, soup to nuts of building an application, um, takes you steps through step um, of how to get uh, an, your application would be an A application express application, and then it shows you how to use SQL Developer Data Modeler to build your data model, and then how to push those objects into the database, and uh, how to write some stored procedures, and how to debug those and then actually building the Apex apps. So Application Express is running on this image. Oracle REST Data Services is running on this image. Uh, Database 12C is running on this image. Uh, SQL Developer and uh, SQL Developer Data Modeler are on this image, and all of the connections in those apps are already pre-configured. Um, you don't have to be um, a Linux or Unix uh, you know, experienced user to use this image. You can see it has a graphical user interface, so I can launch applications from here, and there's system tools. So if I need to go in and disable my firewall or, you know, update the OS if I want to, you can do all of those things via the, the, the GUI. I'm just stepping you in here into a terminal window. Um, to show you what you see. So when you first open this up, um, the welcome message reminds us that all passwords are Oracle. It tells us that we have um, a multi-tenant um, pluggable database. So the container, SID, is CDB1, and the pluggable SID is ORCL. If I start a SQL Plus session, which I'm going to do here in a second, it defaults to logging you into the pluggable. Um, some of these labs that you'll run through will actually make data changes. So we actually push out scripts in here to go in and reset the environment. So if you went in and deleted stuff and created stuff and you want to reset that for a coworker or a fellow student to play with, you would just run these scripts and it'll it'll take the environment back to back to square one. If you do something really bad, you can always just re-download the image and start from scratch that way. Um, if you think you're getting ready to do something bad in VirtualBox, uh, you can create a um, snapshot. So you can basically say, um, take this image and um, basically timestamp it to right now and that you could roll back to snapshots to because I could take a new snapshot. So <laughs> snapshot of right before I do something crazy, uh, I do something crazy and bork it, I can roll back to the snapshot. So let's run SQL Plus. And I did say all passwords or Oracle. No, I don't need to log in as sys. Well, I don't need to log in as sys, so I'm not going to log in as sys. SQL plus. By the way, the, order, the database is up and running. Uh, HR. So the HR account is unlocked, and it has privs. I generally go in and grant God privs to HR and use that, or I'll create a new user. So I can see I'm connected to 12.102, and the reason I mentioned it's 12.102 is because um, in memory is on and configured um, in this image. So if you've heard us talk about um, this new columnar-based um, database that's now available where you can put a table, you can put a partition, uh, you can put a table column in memory and increase performance of your queries by 
you know, scale factor of, you know, 110 to some crazy exponential or logarithmic scale, you can go see that and play with that in here. Um, now, the image only has 2 gigs of RAM associated to it, so, you know, this is kind of just a, again, play learning environment, but you can at least uh, start to get um, used to it before you go to do it for real. Um, we also have lots of um, the demo accounts on here. So select star from SH, which is short for sales history. Here's a new syntax for 12, fetch first 10 rows only, which is way better than where row num is less than 11. And here's that data that's um, come back. So that's SQL Plus, and SQL Plus is awesome. But um, I've also got SQL Developer and SQL Developer Data Modeler here on the image, and you can run uh, the browser inside the image and do your Application Express stuff. You can run the database IDE and the database design tools inside the image if you want. Um, what I've found is that a lot of people uh, like to run their software from their host machine, you know, so for their actual laptop operating system and not from inside the image. And I'm one of those people. Um, the database is responsive and runs great inside the image, and the applications inside of it do okay too. But um, I'd rather run SQL Developer uh, from my desktop and not have its OS and um, hardware footprint touch what's happening inside the image. I don't want those things to have to share. So I want to try to show you the easiest way to be able to connect from a host, so the machine that's hosting the image, to actually connecting inside the, the image itself. So I'm going to stop sharing and come back to my other box. Okay, so back to the show. So I could spend, heck, 10 minutes is a, a very optimistic guess. I could spend the next two hours talking to you about um, not only VirtualBox network adapter settings, but just in general networking and how to get it, the image set up so it gets its own IP address. And not only gets its own IP address, but gets it such that you can see the machine um, from the host or from other machines on your, um, you know, subnet. And then we could talk about firewalls and how to disable them if you need to. Although I think the version of this, the latest version of this image, the, the firewalls are gone. If they're not and you have the root access, you can go into the applications menu in the, in the GUI and disable those, or you can flush the IP cables if you know the, the Nix commands. So I'm going to show you how to cheat, and it's actually not just cheating. I think it's probably, it's probably the most reliable way to set this up. Um, it's called port forwarding, and it's a setting in your virtual box um, for the image itself. And all really that you're doing is you're saying, virtual box, I want you to listen for traffic on your machine on port 1521. That doesn't have to be 1521, it could be any port, but 1521 is the port that the listener for the database is servicing. So when I'm on my, my local machine and I send traffic to port 1521, VirtualBox will take that traffic and forward it to port 1521 on the Linux, the Oracle Linux image, or to the database appliance. So if I'm in SQL Plus on my box and I say connect to localhost 1521, it's going to localhost 1521, but it's being then forwarded to um, 1521 on the image. So to do that, to set this up, settings, go to the network page. And again, I told you we could talk about these to the day is done. I, I fought with these. I've had probably the best look, best luck um, with either the 
bridged or the host only adapter. And if you go to the VirtualBox tech, um, community on OTN, there's lots and lots of great support out there to show you. Um, and the other thing you can do is actually set up multiple adapters. But uh, at least one of them you need to set, and you can set it to um, NAT, and that should enable this button here, port forwarding. And you need to create at least one entry here. And it's actually, I don't think you have to set host IP here because I haven't set it on my Mac and it works just fine. But um, And you can call it anything you want. The name just makes it easy for you to remember why you created here in the first place. Um, so I called it SQLnet. So if TCP traffic on port 1521 is going to get forwarded over to port 1521 on the guest. I've created a second one called SSH, which allows me to SSH into the box just by SSHing to localhost on my machine, which is a little weird, but I'm a little weird too. So you set that up, you say OK, and it should be uh, immediate. I don't think you have to bounce the image. If for some reason it's not working, try shutting down the image, making the change, and um, going again. And then when I come into any of my um, database apps, uh, we'll, do, um, we'll do this one. So this is our new tool called SQL CL, which is a kind of a new version of SQL Plus that uses a lot of um, SQL developer features. So I've got a script that connects for me, so I'm going to say type just demo. That. So on my connection here, I'm launching um, my application. I'm saying connect as SQL developer demo to localhost on port 1521. Now on this image, this is not the dev box image, so my um, SID is different on the um, on the appliance that everyone downloads, it's ORCL, which is the default. If you want to connect to the container, it's CDB1. But for you, generally, you'd probably want to connect to the pluggable. So this is a multi-tenant um, image that we're providing out there. So when I run that, it's going to connect not to an Oracle database running on my laptop, but to an Oracle database running on that image. And there's no performance degradation to using the port forwarding. I mean, it's bits can move really fast when it's at that level. So I'm connecting, and now I'm in, and it's no different than if I were running this inside the image itself. If I come in in SQL Developer and look at, um, so here's my CDB connection. It's localhost 1521, uh, and here's for my normal connection. It's localhost 1521, the pluggable. So really, between my um, Mac and my Windows box and the VirtualBox image, I'm able to test and run our software for Windows OS X and Oracle Linux, and I could theoretically spin up images for, you know, um, Ubuntu, Debian, all those other Linux varieties out there if I, if I chose to. Um, I think that's the um, gist of it. I could show you. I think I stepped through. I showed you the beginnings of the labs, but let me do that again one more time because there's something in there that might be not super um, obvious. So I can double click on here, or I can just click on the the browser icon. Either way, I think the home page is set to the hands-on labs. 
if I were to come into the data modeler track, so I want to learn about database design and working with uh, uh, dimensional modeling. By default, the screenshot, uh, screenshots are not showing. You have to come in here and click, click, click. Don't do that. Just click this button over here, and it automatically blows out all the screenshots. So it really does give you step by step exactly how to do this stuff. All of the codes provided. Um, it is a simple matter of copying and pasting a lot of times just to see how it works, how it goes. And all the demo data is, is installed there as well. And this is a database that you can do anything you want. I mean, I've extended this base image to have a lot more than just sales history. I've downloaded all of my tweets. I've downloaded all of my um, untapped beer check-ins. I've downloaded some open source hockey stats. Um, I've created my own tables. Um, we don't have nice demo data yet for like um, secure files. I've created my own blob table and some SDO geometry spatial stuff. Um, it's a fully licensed, fully configured, everything is on um, 12C image. And uh, the same thing for Application Express and Oracle REST data services. It doesn't have, I don't believe, the early adopter versions of the software, because that's license and legal-wise hard for us to pull off. So it'll have um, the latest and greatest commercially available, what we call GA copies of the software. So it'll probably have Apex 4.2. Two, I think, in Oracle REST Data Services 2.10 and SQL Developer 4.0 something. But again, the image is for you to do whatever you want. I can come in here, pull up the browser, go to OTN and download those things, and I can upgrade the operating systems if I want to, or you know, uninstall things if I'd like. It's a it's a great way to teach yourself even just Linux if you'd like, or um, teaching yourself. Um, shell scripting, and of course, all the cool database stuff is here too. I, I can't think of an easier, faster way to spin up um, an image. Maybe the only faster way to do it um, would be to sign up for one of our um, database as a service accounts where everything is already up and running for you, but that's not free. Um, this is free. We also have the Express edition of the database, um, but you have to download that install it, uh, configuration is pretty basic, and then once it's up and running, you can do a lot more with it in terms of your license. Um, but feature-wise, it's really stripped down. It has less features than standard edition of the database. So if you're doing this for training, and also XC, I think, is at 11 GR2. So if you want to, if, you know, if you're a SQL Server DBA or a Sybase application person, you know there are more Oracle jobs out there. Maybe they pay better. You just want to upgrade your skill set, you know, you might as well get this full-blown image that has the latest and greatest stuff on it with all of the license features turned on. Um, and Installing and putting XE on your machine is fine, but then it's running on your host OS. The great thing about the image is RSC, if you don't want it to run, you just come in here and shut it down, and it doesn't run again until you turn it, tell it to turn it on. And if you want to get rid of it, it's right-click, remove image, and take the media files off. You don't have any uninstall. You don't have a registry to clean up. Um, none of that icky stuff. This image is one of many. Uh, I'd say it's the most important because it's the one that I play with the most. Um, but other ones of note, uh, a fairly new one is um, Oracle Big Data Lite VM, which I, uh, I'm, I, I think of it as uh, the big data appliance on an image. And it says Lite, but it's really something like 80 gigabytes. When you think of big data, that's very, very small. But in terms of an image running on your laptop, um, you want lots of disk space to, to run that one. But it's, it's very, very cool. I mean, you've got, um, you've got the the Hive JDBC stuff all set up and good to go. You've got a bunch of sample data on there set up and, and good to go. I don't have much experience with these other um, VMs, but you can see 
Um, the MySQL team uh, has one on there, and uh, there's a few operating system and application-specific ones. But the one we've been talking about, if you want to know how to go find this, Google, um, if you Google Oracle Developer Day database, it should bring you directly to this page. And here you can see everything that's set up and um, good to go on it. So again, just to recap really quickly, where people get, um, I think, hung up and stuck the most is right when they go to import it, they go to click New instead of Import. So do Import. And then about 20 to 30% of you will get stuck right here where this BIOS hardware virtualization has to be enabled. And then this is where they get stuck next. I don't know who to log in as. So when I log into the image, I log in as, as uh, OS user Oracle, which I can see right here. And that's the same OS user that owns um, all the software. So if I'm in this image and I open the uh, um, terminal, I'm, I'm Oracle, and if I go to Oracle Home, everything's installed as Oracle. So I can do really destructive stuff with this, and if you stay on the desktop in graphic user mode, interface mode, you're fine. But if you're going to start getting into the um, shell windows and start doing stuff, you might want to create a separate user, just like you normally would. But if I want to you know, switch over to root, that password is Oracle. Uh, one of those will show me that I'm root. You can also um, sudo over to it if you need to. All right. Um, I don't want for all of these to run a whole entire hour, and I like for some of these future sessions to go closer to like 15, 20 minutes. So... I'm going to cut this off now and give people a chance to ask questions. So I'm going to stop the recording. And for the person asking if I'm sleepy, no, I'm not sleepy. I'm just kind of a very un unenergetic speaker. But thanks for thinking about me.